Have you had a difficult time motivating yourself to get out and exercise on a regular basis? You know that you should do it. You know all the health benefits and the psychological benefits, but you just can't drag yourself to get it done. Well, I got some tips to help you out with this. Hey everyone, it's the Productivity Doc with tips and tricks for healthcare professionals, doctors, nurses, dietitians, ophthalmologists, pharmacists, and others to help you avoid burnout, get more done in less time, and make more time for the more important things in life. So this week, what I wanted to talk about was exercising, mostly focusing on how to motivate yourself and kind of push yourself to get in a regular habit of exercising. If you're already exercising regularly and going out for a jog every day, lifting weights, doing all that stuff, I'm not sure if this video will be all that much help for you. But if you've had a hard time getting yourself up off the couch or just pushing yourself after a long, busy day to get out and exercise, you know it's going to be good for you, but you just can't push yourself to do it, then I think this video is going to be helpful for you. So I've personally found that having a regular exercise routine has been invaluable in helping me manage my energy, my anxiety, and just helping me feel great. I found it's very, been very, very helpful in that. I find that no matter how rough my day is, if I can just get out and do an hour of cardio and then take a shower afterwards, I feel like a million bucks. So it's really been helpful for me. If you're like me or many other healthcare workers, you may find it very difficult to find either the time or the energy to get out there and exercise routinely. We are always so busy with so many demands on our time and energy that it's really hard to put aside time to get out there and do what we know that we should do, which is exercise regularly. But I would say you got to look at it like an investment. You're putting aside money, just like putting aside money in the bank or an investment for the future. You are investing and in, you will get energy in return in the future. Another thing that you may have a problem with is if you're exercising regularly to the point of exhaustion, then it's very hard to motivate yourself to get out and exercise the day after. So I've got some tips to try to try and overcome that. So we all know from our teaching that exercise is excellent for your health, but you also know that it's excellent for your focus and your energy levels. I wanted to share two tips with you on this today. One was how to get going with this. And the other tip was something that you can do to basically help manage your time or kind of kill two birds with one stone while you're exercising. So if you're having a hard time getting in the habit of doing it regularly, I recommend um, focusing on the uh, process of it, not the outcome. So you really want to focus on getting in the habit of exercising. Like if you just can't bring yourself to exercise on a daily basis, you know, just get in the habit of doing something every day, even if it's just one minute of walking on the spot or jumping jacks. If you can do that regularly, get in the habit of doing that and then slowly increase it up. So maybe do one minute of jumping jacks for a week and then do two minutes of walking or jumping jacks for a week. And then the next week, maybe three minutes and then maybe five minutes. And if you can do that, eventually you can work your way up to doing anywhere from a half an hour to an hour of exercise a week, which can be really helpful. I think it's very important in getting the habit of doing a short exercise regularly instead of focusing on just getting out there and just killing it and crushing it the first time. If you do it the first way, you're going to get in the habit of doing it and you're going to start to think of yourself as someone who exercises or an exerciser. Whereas if you do it the second way, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up exhausting yourself and you're going to find excuses for not getting up and doing it the next day. Um, you'll be sitting there and you'll be like, oh man, it was so hard the last time I exercised. You know what? I'm going to do it tomorrow. And then the next day you say, I don't want to do it. I'll do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow never comes and you just don't get into the habit. I found that when I started jogging, um, I always tried to go out. I always tried to go out and just give it, run hard for 20 minutes until I was just totally out of breath and exhausted. And then the next day came around, I had no interest in going back out again. So what I found was 
you know, one day when I was reading on the internet, I read that there is a strategy that people who are successful at long distance jogging uh, use to get themselves used to jogging regularly. And what this strategy was, was they would jog till they feel tired and then they would jog to the next street light and then take a break. So using this method um, does two things. So the first thing is that it makes you feel like you're not giving up because you're not giving up the first time you feel tired, right? But it also, you don't exhaust yourself to the point uh, where you feel miserable afterwards. So I'd recommend doing this for a few times. And then after you've done it for a few times, time yourself and see how long can you run before you need to take a break. I found that with myself, whereas before I was going out and just trying to push myself for 10, 15 minutes, jogging till I was way beyond the point of being out of breath, I found that um, jogging just till I feel tired, I could do about three and a half minutes. So then the next week I'd go out and I would challenge myself to do four minutes and then four and a half and then five minutes and then six minutes. And before you knew it, I was up to jogging, you know, 15 minutes at a time to a half an hour at a time to an hour. And now, you know, I routinely jog for about an hour uh, after most clinic days. And I've been doing that for about 16 years. And uh, I got to say, I've had some rough jogs out in bad weather, but I've never regretted jogging when I get home and I take a shower. Using this method is a way that I went from being a never jogger to a almost everyday jogger. Now I do intersperse my jogging with riding on an exercise bike just so I don't wear out my joints or injure myself. Um, I've never done marathons. People have suggested that I do marathons and I just, I, I tell them, you know what happened to the first person who ran a marathon? They died right when they finished it. Look it up. It's ancient Greek history. So like I always say, start low, go slow and work your way up. The other tip that I find is I find that it's very useful and also motivating to kill two birds with one stone while I'm jogging. So almost always when I'm jogging, I am listening either to a audiobook or a podcast. Um, when I first started out, uh, it was during med school and I found that listening to an interesting audiobook was helpful. Later on when I, I it was crunch time to study for my exams. Uh, I found that was very helpful to listen to um, lectures that someone in the class had recorded. Um, and then that way I was able to listen to lectures and get that done while I was jogging. So what can you do to help your situation? Well, if you're at the couch potato stage, you don't want to get up off the couch. You just want to come home and watch Netflix all night. Try getting up and walking on the spot for anywhere from one to five minutes or while you're watching Netflix. Um, I find that having a step counter on your phone where you can sort of measure how many steps you're taking can be really helpful and motivating. If you're only doing 5,000 steps a day, maybe try to do 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 10,000. Start low, go slow, work your way up. If you are a bit more active, let's say maybe you do 10 minutes or 30 minutes of walk a day, maybe you wanna try stepping it up to jogging. Um, but you know, even just going for a walk every day can be really quite helpful. So, and I'm hoping that, you know, if more of us get out and do it, we can kind of talk the talk and walk the walk and motivate more of our patients to get out and exercise regularly too. So I always like to give people a bit of a pro tip, um, at the end of the talk, um, what I would recommend that you guys do, it always helps if you can prepare, uh, for exercise. So what I like to do is I have a jogging bag that I uh, bring into the office every day because I go for a jog for about an hour after every clinic day. So uh, what I do is I bring it in and it's got my shorts and my t-shirt for the summertime or it's got my jogging tights and my sweater and the different layers and my toque and hand gloves uh, for the wintertime. And once I'm done my day, I can't wait to get dressed in to those clothes so that I can go for a jog. I do a little stretch, go out to where I need to jog, do my jog. I even have a towel for my seat when I get back so I don't get the sweat all over my uh, car seat. And that's a way that I can very quickly get jogging and get home uh, later on in the day. If I had to come home and I had to pull everything out and you know get everything ready uh, for me uh, instead of having it all set up beforehand, there'd probably be more days where I'd say, ah, it's not worth it. I'll just do it later, right? Never do it. So, so I'm hoping that you guys have found value in this. If you have, smash that like button. 
comment down below if there's something that you'd like me to talk about in a later video or if you've got some suggestions for how I can improve things. I'm always looking to improve uh, as I go along. And if you'd like more tips and tricks for healthcare professionals and others, uh, hit that subscribe button down below. Anyway, have a good one, and I hope that your next week goes excellent. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.